AP Seminar Task 1 Practice, Cristo Rey, Newark High School. Our topic for this presentation is global warming, and our question is, do the benefits gained by ExxonMobil outweigh the climatic impact on the environment and animal life? In 2015, Barack Obama made a very distinctive and memorable quote. He stated that there's one issue that will define the contours of this century more dramatically than any other, and that is the urgent threat of climate change. Before we begin, the definition of global warming should be established. According to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, global warming is a complex process that happens when Earth's temperature rapidly increases as a direct result of the emission of greenhouse gases. What happens is that these gases linger in the atmosphere and prevent solar rays from leaving the surface of the Earth. As a result of this, Earth's temperature increases. The thing with global warming is that it not only affects Earth's temperature, but it also brings about a myriad of environmental disasters. We have higher sea levels, increased extinction rates, polluted air, acidic waters, severe weather changes, frequent and more disruptive natural disasters, and the list goes on. ExxonMobil has hired scientists to find out the very information that my colleague has just presented. However, they are guilty of corporate hypocrisy because they have released false advertising denouncing everything my partner has just stated. Exxon and oil. Does the overuse of oil increase the rate of global warming? Oil is a universal source of energy, but people tend to forget that oil is also a non-renewable source. When burnt, oil releases CO2 into the atmosphere. CO2 is carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. ExxonMobil has 32 oil refineries in 17 different countries. With the excess amount of refineries and gas stations worldwide, it increases the rate of global warming. Now, here we have a map depicting the global CO2 level in 2002, 2016. As you can see in 2002, the global CO2 level was around 365 parts per million. And in 14 years later, in 2016, it increased to about 410 parts per million. At this rate, the global CO2 level will reach 500 parts per million by the year 2050. <coughs> the economic gain. How does ExxonMobil benefit financially from ignoring global warming? In this chart, we can see the CO2 level versus ExxonMobil's profits. Now, in the year 1968, the global CO2 level was around 323 parts per million, while Exxon made a, made a profit of $1.2 billion. In the year 1982, the CO2 level was right about 341 parts per million, while ExxonMobil made $4.2 billion. Now, finally, in 2008, the CO2 level was increased to 386 parts per million, while ExxonMobil made a profit of $4.25.2 billion. Now, for every increase of the CO2 level by one increment, ExxonMobil made about $700 million. <clears throat> I looked at my research through an environmental lens, and my question was, in what ways will migratory animals be affected by the environmental change? As my colleague has previously stated, these animals cannot adapt to the changes in the environment that are happening quickly. There are many things that are happening in the soil because of these volcanic eruptions and tsunamis and all the other effects that are happening. The severity <coughs> of these natural disasters are proportional to the rising of the temperature in the Earth's atmosphere. Because of this, the soil has changed and is now functioning as a sponge. With the soil acting as a sponge, it soaks up most of Earth's water supply. When the water supply is drained, animals and other habitats do not have the water that is a necessity for them to live. Because of that, there are many endangered species that are out there, such as the mountain tapir, the spectacled bear, and the Andean fox. Our future in jeopardy. Will the new climate caused by global warming endanger the survival of animal species? To add on to what my colleague has said, animal life is in great jeopardy and they're clinging to survival. One of the ways oil and gas companies monopolize on natural resources without regard of the consequences of their actions is with gas drilling. These projects disrupt natural migration and habitats. They add on to the noise pollution and also the physical pollution of the environment. This disrupts the migration of migrating animals and prevents them from getting where they need to be. As a result of this, Nesting seasons or breeding seasons are disrupted, and this delays the development of communities. Oil and gas drilling projects are said to be one of the traces of 21% of all of U.S. greenhouse emissions, along with gas and coal. 
This is Henry Shaw, the former manager of the Environmental Area in Exxon Research. Now, he was tasked with creating a project to test the absorption rates of carbon by the oceans. This project was meant to see if ExxonMobil could be considered a factor in the talk of global climate change. The results of this project were less than what Exxon expected at the absorption rate of only 20%. Exxon ended up scrapping the project and completely covering it up so no one could find out the results. To add on to the findings of my colleagues, global warming and rapid climate change are being linked to the sixth mass extinction. Now, the five former mass extinctions have been vastly volcanic eruptions or meteor collisions. However, the sixth extinction is being linked to human activity. A book written in 2015 by journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner Elizabeth Colbert stated, human activity, consumption of fossil fuels, the acidification of the ocean, pollution, deforestation, and forced migration threaten life forms of all kinds. It is estimated that one third of coral reefs, freshwater mollusks, sharks, and rays, one fourth of all mammals and reptiles, and one sixth of birds are heading towards extinction. This is all telling us that our world is dying right before our eyes. In 2015, there was a New Jersey state case against ExxonMobil's Bayway refinery. They, they were able to harm 1,500 acres of wetland and marshes. Now, this is important to the atmosphere because the plants absorb the CO2. With those plants gone, there is now more increased CO2 in Bayway in New Jersey. Continuing off of what my colleague has said, many ecosystems are dying out, like the Paramount ecosystem in Ecuador. It contains 4.6 million out of the 18.2 million of Ecuador's total population. This ecosystem has five species of reptiles, 24 amphibians, and 88 birds, 24 of which are only found in Ecuador. 40% of this land is being protected, but not protected from climate change. And of the 60% left, 30% has degraded so much it is beyond human repair. Now, there are a lot of animals and flora that are dying out before we can even find them, so there are many undiscovered species that we cannot claim as being discovered. If they aren't dying out from climate change, and they're dying out from human impact, such as ExxonMobil oil drilling, deforestation, or from poachers. An example of that would be the Jim Plato toad. Recently, the misconduct of ExxonMobil has become public. They have taken very small incentives to change. They currently use 10% of ethanol. Ethanol is a renewable fuel made from corn and other plant materials. 10% was not enough. This blend was created to decrease the amount of CO2 released in the atmosphere. Our suggestion to ExxonMobil is to increase the amount of ethanol by to 25%. This will, in, this will lower the damage of CO2 tremendously. This is our conclusion. ExxonMobil has taken advantage of the environment for their own personal financial gain. They have taken very small steps to change. We are calling for bigger steps.